going to do this with a 10 too. All right, so the ear is correct whether you do it straight across or whether you make a V shape. If you see the V shape, you're ten generally they're trying to make the ear look a little bit longer, but either or is correct. So it doesn't matter. If you, if you have a tendency to do it straight across, then that's fine. This is a 10 forward. Um, I know uh, sometimes like before the show, you know, if they're grooming them the weekend before, they'll do like a 10 in reverse because then it'll cover up the little naked fluff that they, the naked areas from doing it in 10 in reverse by the time they get to the show. And you go all the way down to see where it curls right there. That's, how, that's a general good rule of thumb if you've got good ears. And a lot of times they want that to lay back. So we come on the inside of it with the 40. Just on the inside of the curl. And a lot of times that'll make it stay back further. Seems weird, but that's one of the little tricks that they do. And anybody that wants to come stand up behind or anything like that so you can see better, you're more than welcome to. Always clean out the underneath in reverse because you want to keep plenty of airflow going in there. Just watch that little flap on the inside of the ear. And then the other thing I do is I edge the ears like this. And then you get a nice flat, tight edge. Can I ask you a question about that? Mm-hmm. Because years ago, it's been a very long time since I did talk to learned about talking. Right. Um, we had always scissor edged. Uh -huh. I any used to too. Is there a reason that you just prefer that? I think it's. Because I like using my clippers much more. I possible. think it's. I think it. Yeah, I think the clippers get it crisper, and you don't have to do it so much. With the scissors, you know, the scissors push, and and you end up having to go back over it, you know, at least once or twice, to get a nice crisp edge. So I, I tend to, unless I have like a really jumpy dog, I tend to use my clippers, and I'll even. I'll even knock it down to a nine and uh, with these big fat ears like this and actually come right up backwards because you're not going to, that ear's not going to fit in there. So you get a nice, nice tight crisp edge. Now we are probably not going to get this entire dog done because <laughs> we're going to do a lot of talking and all of that. Um, but if anybody, uh, wants to practice their car doing or do anything like that we can do that and I'll just I'll finish her up next weekend it's not a big deal but we'll definitely get one side done for sure all right so what I do is it depends on the dog I've seen some buff cockers where they shave this and they don't blend this part and it looks like I don't know how to explain it you know what I'm talking about yeah they look like <laughs> like that right but you know they're they're supposed to have a large round eye, so you want to make the eye prominent and stand out. But if you do that and then don't blend the front, then it kind of looks like I don't know, like a like ET, I'm like pop pop popping up, popping up out of the thing. You know, yeah, it's weird. Um, so I generally t I tend to just go like right over top of the eyelid here. And you can do it with your thinners too if you want to. But in you know for for pet purposes in your salon, you're probably going to take a clipper. And you're just going to go right up over the very top of the eye right there, right in front of that little bone. So you don't make this as stark. And then you follow that around over the top of the ear and around the back skull. Just to stop right at the neck because you don't want to take the back of their neck off.
and you can do that shorter or longer or whatever they're supposed to have a nice dome top skull that's why we get this stuff that's why this stays and it's not a hat it shouldn't be like this giant top hat thing on top of their head if the owner wants it fine but it's not supposed to be that way it's supposed to just accentuate the dome top skull and that's one of the things I'm also going to do with her is I'm going to start working this with the carding knife and they don't normally do that when they show them so she's going to have to get used to it but the more I work that with the carding knife the flatter it'll lay and then I can shape just around the outside edge so that's one of the one of the things I'm going to do with her and then I'm going to work this cow lick in the back of her neck so I want to see if I can pluck that out and make it lay down. When my schnauzer uh, was alive and I was using her for grooming competition, she had an eyebrow that had a cow lick. And so I, I waited until after Orlando one year and I knew I wasn't, I wasn't going to do anything again until like June or July. And I plucked her whole eyebrow out and pulled it all forward and it was gone. Yep. So you can, you can manipulate that hair follicle and make it lay down if you really want to work at it. You can do it with pretty much any breed, even poodles. If they've got a funky little spot that you just don't like, you can, you can pull little hairs out you know, real quickly without hurting them and kind of make it go the way you want it to go. But luckily these guys, their ears are so thick that you don't have to worry too much about it sliding up inside. Obviously if it was a seven or something, you'd probably have a problem. But with this little five and one blades or, you know, probably anything, you know, 10, 15, you can probably, you could probably edge most of their ears like that. And if you're worried about it, don't go like this. Just go like this and press it next to your finger. Does that make sense? Put your finger right on the edge and go this way. So basically what I'm doing is I'm shaving out that little curve where it bends with the 40. So when I let go of it, it curls back. There's not that hair behind it making it stick out. Okay, finish the top of this here. Mm-hmm. 